Welcome to AmmoSmith.com and today we're going to go into uh, loading cast bullets into rifles and we're going to need a few things uh, you're going to need your fully prepped and primed brass you are going to need the charge you're going to be using and you're going to need your cast bullets in this instance we're going to be using the uh, the Lee 200 grain 30 caliber bullet size to 309 inch with a gas check also, you're going to need a quarter inch wooden dowel about this long. And you're going to need some stuff called polyfill. And there's a reason we're going to need this, and I'll show you in a minute. And you're going to need your press and your reloading dies. Let's get started. Okay, in cast bullets, there are definite limitations. Uh, in rifle bullets, you can only push these guys to probably about 22 to 2300 feet a second before you start letting. Now these particular ones here are cast out of pure linotype which means they're extremely hard. And what the gas check does is it um, acts as a heat shield on the bottom and causes a very nice gas seal without gas cutting. And what gas cutting is is when you get gas being forced around the bullet between the bore of the rifle and the bullet itself and that will cause you a horrendous amount of letting. Now what the polyfill does, in right here, and we're just going to take a little tufts of it, but we have to weigh it. And we need to take up the space inside the case. And we're only using a small amount of pistol powder. In this particular case, I'm using 15, I'm sorry, 16 grains of unique. And that's only going to fill the case to right about here. And so the rest of the space is just airspace. We need to make sure that the powder is pushed back against the primer for a good consistent ignition. You don't have to put the polyfill in there but if you don't, if you turn a case like this, like if you're hunting and then you throw it in a rifle, your powder can be sloshed up to the base of the bullet or you can have it laying completely flat inside the bullet which will cause erratic ignitions causing um, accuracy problems. So I got a couple cases already charged and I need to show you how to set up your polyfill. Okay, on the polyfill, um, you need to weigh it. And the reason why you have to weigh it is because you're adding weight to the actual charge. So we're going to set the scale up for one and a half grams of polyfill. Now the bank that I bought, I picked up at Michael's and you're going to take a little tuft about that big and it's going to kind of wad it up a little bit throw it into the scale and until the needle goes all the way across evenly on the top just keep adding a little bit at a time because what you want to do is make sure what you're doing is kind of using as much consistency as you can. And any inconsistencies is going to show up in your accuracy. So now we have one and a half grams of polyfill, which is a tuft like that. Now the polyfill does a couple things. One, it keeps the powder at the bottom of the case. You know, nestled up against the flash hole so when it burns, it burns nice and evenly. Also, it creates a, a slight cushion in there too and what that'll do is it'll allow the polyfill to act as a buffer between the, the gas pressure and the bullet itself so it'll be less stress on your bullet. So let's go ahead and insert it into the case. Okay, I already have a bullet here that has the 15 grains of powder. 16 rather. And with, you're going to use a wooden dowel to tamp it into the case. You don't want to use too much pressure. Just a little, like that. Get it in there. There. It should come out just about where the shoulder is. Right here and that's going to make sure that the powder is going to be rested at the bottom of the case with no um, sloshing around of the powder as it were 
and that's how you set your polyfill up. Make sure you weigh each and every charge and you weigh each and every um, polyfill buffer you put in there. The other thing too about the cases, the more consistent your brass is, the better off you're going to be. So you want to trim it, deburr it, you want to uniform your primer pocket and you want to deburr your flash hole. That way your charge is getting set off each and every way exactly the same way each and every time. Otherwise your accuracy is going to suffer. Now depending on the particular rifle that you have, you're going to either A, um, get good results or B, get bad results with a particular powder. So this is being a new bullet mold that I got. What I'm doing is I'm making about 10 or 12 different loads and I'm going to try each of them at the range. Some have full charges of powder um, and others have pistol powder loaded in them. When you're using pistol powder, the reason why I'm showing you how to do this is because we're using 15 or 16 grains versus 48 to 54 grains of powder, you're going to save a lot of money. Let's get to seating.